One of the things that it also uh, highlighted for me was what I think is the fundamental childlike quality in Jonathan Rumi's portrayal of Jesus. So maybe we can just talk a little bit about this performance because I think that, you know, everything else good about this series that can be said, it's going to just fall flat on its face if the person playing Jesus isn't able to to, to step up to that that yeah. kind of impossible task. But what I was going to say about, about Jonathan Rumi's performance is that it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I... Anytime he's on screen, I'm just sitting there with like a stupid grin on my face, just so happy to be watching this. Um, I I think that I think that portraying Jesus is something of an impossible task for an actor. I think that you're always going to fall short. That you cannot. I don't know. For as much confidence as I have in the the craft, I just don't think a perfect personality can be can be adequately portrayed, let alone a divine personality, um, adequately portrayed uh, by, by uh, you know, a mere, mere mortal. Um, but, uh, but, but certainly sacrifices are made and, and things are emphasized. So if in Pasolini's film, we get a portrayal of Jesus that emphasizes his, uh, his, his, you know, zealousness for the kingdom and his uh, uh, fierceness um, in challenging, you know, the Pharisees and, and putting forth his teaching. Uh, I think that's what stuck with me the most after watching Gospel According to Matthew, uh, what what continued to live with me and, and to, to kind of almost bother me in a way, uh, in a good way, um, was this, this, this intensity of the portrayal in that film. But that's done to the exclusion of of pretty much anything else about about the figure of of Christ, right? Here we get um, a different emphasis, and I I think that uh, we can talk more about what what that emphasis is emphasis is. But um, but the first thing I would say is that he's childlike, and we see that very clearly in episode three, and then it's carried forward through the rest of the season, uh, he's able to get simply excited about something. So, uh, for instance, there's a scene where it's before he goes to meet Nicodemus under cover of night, and he's at Peter's house, and Andrew comes with a cloak that they've acquired for him, and he's just excited to, like, see the cloak and then go try it on. And 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 it's such a simple, childlike excitement Um that you also see at the wedding feast at Cana or the way that he jokes around. But he also has this terrific sense of humor. He's always smiling. Um, I, I think that that of, it's like, of course, Jesus is going to be like a child, right? Um, without thereby being childish. So he's still a very masculine figure. And actually, uh, as I'm speaking, the sun is coming in here so uh shall we just like pull this table out of the way so that we can yeah we can fix the the sun situation <laughs> this is a uh, one of the one of the dangers of filming in the middle of the day i thought his performance was fantastic it is um i mean for me sort of the bar was jim caviezel's performance in the passion um and yeah i would say that i find this performance as compelling uh, just as compelling as that one. But of course, he, uh, Jonathan Rumi has had much more of an opportunity to flesh this out, um, to add nuances that, that are not there, because of course, the passion is focusing on one, uh, for the most part, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, um, the tone is, is pretty harrowing throughout. Uh, there's those moments of relief, but um, here we, we have um, much more of an opportunity to explore kind of a range of, of experiences. I um, I hadn't thought about it in terms of childlikeness. I really like that um, that observation because I think that that's very um, fitting. And of course, uh, given that that one of his teachings to the disciples is that they must be like children in order to enter the kingdom, one would expect that he then reflects that himself. So I think that's that's um, very sensible. It's I think it's also important with that not to sort of project post-Victorian ideas of what children are like back into uh, Jesus's words. 
um, we tend to think of children as being these sort of models of, of innocence and all of that. Um, that's that's very much kind of a late idea. It, it seems like from from literature of the time, um, there was the idea that children were teachable, that they were malleable, um, uh, they were in, in that sense sort of receptive, um, and also that there was there's more simplicity for children. Um, they they tend to take things. Um, you know, in, in a sort of integral way, much more easily. Mm -hmm.